Alright, hello there, Thrill Seekers. That was, of course, a piece of the Kiss song, Hard Luck Woman, but I didn't bother to learn the whole song, so that's all you get. My nephew, who is an uh, internet marketing genius, he gets paid money to do this, told me I should start putting videos up on Saturdays, because people watch videos on Saturdays and nobody puts up new content. So I thought I'd do that, and I thought what I'd try is uh, reviving that concept that I was doing for a little while of the moldy oldies, uh, uh, repurposing older videos that I'd made before. So for this first one, uh, what I'm going to present to you is a sort of demo that I made for... Okay, let me try to back up with the story. I have a friend named uh, Yagi Takeshi, or in, well, Yagi is his family name and Takeshi is his first name, so in normal English parlance we'd say Takeshi Yagi. Anyway, he was the director of one of the biggest Ultraman movies of all time. He was the producer of a show called Ultraman Max. He worked at Tsuburaya Productions for, he started a little before I did and quit a little bit after I did so we both work there pretty much the same time and we were pals and a few years ago we got the idea that he'd been doing some stuff with NHK which NHK if you don't know is like the Japanese version of BBC it's like the national broadcasting um, uh, company of Japan and they do high quality programs and documentaries and stuff and we hatched the idea of putting together a documentary where for, for in English for uh, the US market because NHK has been trying to produce things for the US market about Dogen with me narrating the story of Dogen and so I put uh, together this demo that you're about to see to try to interest the folks at NHK in a documentary series about Dogen that would be narrated by me. So you'll hear me narrate as if in the third person about me, about this Brad Warner fellow who's gonna do this documentary and stuff, so it's a little weird there. But uh, that was the idea of it. I thought it was a good idea. I still think it's a good idea, but the folks at NHK were not impressed. They were like, oh, this Brad Warner fellow is not big enough to, to sell this. Get us Richard Gere or some... I don't, I don't remember what their answer was, but their answer was basically they didn't want to do it. But here is the demo that I produced. It's sort of... Um, I mean, I mention in here that I'm going to interview a bunch of people and show their pictures and stuff. I never actually <laughs> talked to those people about whether they wanted to be interviewed by me, but I was reasonably, reasonably confident that I would be able to, to get them to sit down for an interview. Uh, so anyway, this is, uh, this is the thing that I presented to, or via uh, Yagi-san pre presented to NHK that they rejected as a documentary about Dogen, which I still think is a good idea, and I wish somebody would uh, want to finance this thing, and me and Yagi will put it together if you want. So if you're out there and you're a producer of uh, television documentaries, uh, you know, there's a... my, my um, email address is right at the bottom of the screen, bw at hardcorezen.info. Write to me and we'll talk about doing this documentary. So uh, I'll come back and say a couple of things after the the demo is uh, finished. So here you go. Here's my demo of my Dogen documentary. In the 13th century, the Japanese Buddhist monk Dogen Zenji founded the Soto School of Zen Buddhism, which became one of Japan's major religions. Even so, for almost 700 years, Dogen's writings were rarely read and his philosophy was rarely studied. Yet today, in the 21st century, Dogen's philosophy has become popular and influential all over the world, particularly in America. How did this happen? How did this obscure Japanese monk become so influential 800 years after his death? How did Dogen come to be influential in modern America, a country that is very different from medieval Japan? How did his philosophy last such a long time? 
To answer these questions, we will take a look at some of the people who have made Dogen's philosophy popular in America. Our host will be Brad Warner, author of several books about Dogen, such as Hardcore Zen, Sit Down and Shut Up, and Don't Be a Jerk. Brad was a former punk rock musician who spent 15 years working for Tsuburaya Productions, the makers of Ultraman. But while Brad worked for Tsuburaya Productions, he was also training as a Zen monk. His teacher was Gudo Nishijima Roshi, who translated Dogen's masterwork Shobo Genzo into English. Brad will show us the history of Dogen in America. In 1959, Shunryu Suzuki Roshi arrived in San Francisco to teach at Sokoji, a small Zen temple attended mainly by Japanese Americans. But San Francisco was the center of the Beatnik movement. The Beatniks were interested in the philosophy of Zen as expressed in books by D.T. Suzuki and Alan Watts. Now they had a chance to actually practice Zen. Brad will trace how Dogen's influence began in San Francisco and then spread throughout America in the following decades. Brad Warner will speak to some of the most important people who teach Dogen's style of Zen in America, including Galen Godwin, director of the Soto Zen Buddhism International Center, David Chadwick, author of Crooked Cucumber, the biography of Shunryu Suzuki, Shohako Okumura, author of several books about Dogen's philosophy, Stephen Hine, Florida International University professor and author of several books about Dogen, Carl Bielefeld, Stanford University professor and author of several books about Dogen, Kazuaki Tanahashi, artist, calligrapher, peace activist, and author of several books about Dogen, and Arthur Braverman, biographer of Homeless Kodo Sawaki, who taught Dogen's style all over Japan. Brad will take us to Dogen's temple, Eiheiji, where Dogen lived and taught, he will take us to San Francisco Zen Center and Tassajara Zen Monastery in Northern California to see how Dogen's teachings are practiced in America. He will also take us to smaller temples such as the Cedar Rapids Zen Center in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, the Houston Zen Center in Houston, Texas, and the Kent Zendo in Kent, Ohio. There we will see how Dogen's teachings are reaching people in some very surprising parts of the U.S. We will also follow Brad to some of his own speaking engagements and see how Dogen's teachings are reaching young people in America. This documentary will be a fascinating look at the way an obscure Japanese monk became one of the most influential thinkers in America. All right, there you have it. Seemed like a good idea to me, but uh, NHK didn't want to do it. Maybe somebody out there will want to do it. Let's see. And by the way, I will be in Europe in September, and the dates are appearing on your screen. I will be in Finland, Germany, France, Belgium, and England. And if you want clickable links to uh, where you can write to for info on this, you can go to hardcorezen.info slash events. So we will see you in Europe. And you can also donate to me if you want to support this channel by going to hardcorezen.info slash donate that is hardcorezen.info slash donate that is my main way of making a living are your donations so i appreciate your support but as always on saturday as well as on weekdays this is offered for free so you don't gotta pay if you don't want to pay we will see you next time have a good time all the time bye hey ziggy this is too hot for you outside huh let me stay in again all right. Talk to you later. Bye, Zig.